Master Huntsman, is there any work for me here? There's always something that needs doing. You're that Scullet's lad, aren't you? Sir Radzig's lackey. That'll be me. Right. I saw you here shortly after the attack. My word, to get away from Talmberg like that, quite remarkable. It's clear you're not easily scared. So I do have a job for you. I'm listening. We've been having terrible problems with poachers lately. In Sir Divish's forests, we've been finding gutted entrails of deer and rabbit nooses all over the place. But no sign of the bastards who put them there. And you want me to track down the poachers? Indeed. Whatever you learn will be useful to me. Do you suspect anyone? Well, it's hard to say. But seeing how much harm they're causing, I'd say they're no crofters looking for a Sunday roast. Shouldn't you be dealing with the poachers yourself? I should, I should. You're quite right. But when I ask the local folk anything, their mouths close up like clams. They're more scared of me than the devil. Do you think the locals are in on it? Well, I don't know. Maybe. But even if not, they'll never talk to me. They're scared I'll dig some skeleton out of their cupboard. You know, the smaller the village, the bigger the secret. That's why I need an outsider to ask for me. I understand. I'll try to find out something about them. Any advice about where to start? Certainly. Ask around the village. Somebody must have seen or heard something. And it wouldn't hurt to ask in the Inn in the Glade, the one on the road towards Neuhof. I've heard they serve good venison, and no shortage of it. That's clear enough. As soon as I hear anything, I'll let you know. Thanks for your help, lad. Good day to you. What do you think about all the poaching lately? What should I be thinking? If they ever catch them, the Divish will have them skinned alive. But for that to happen, our master huntsman would have to be made of sterner stuff. May the Lord watch over you, Henry. Do you think Nicholas isn't doing enough? A master huntsman who lets poachers run wild through his woods? He's useless. He couldn't even stop them hanging a stag's head on his own house. Right. Henry, I'm glad Thank you, innkeeper. By. I'll be going. I heard you've got a poaching problem in the woods around here. In the woods and out of them. Not long back, the bastards hung a deer's head on the huntsman's house. Oh, that's pretty brazen of them. Certainly is. Word around the village is that someone wants to shame him till he squirms. Putting a deer's head on the huntsman's house sounds pretty risky. Why would anyone do that? Maybe they want to show that Huntsman Nicholas is no match for them. And they're not wrong. He isn't the man he should be. Do you think it was someone local? I really don't know. All sorts of things yet said. Panic and hairs back if you listen to some. And others are going on about Tom of the Bass. I swear blind he's got his fingers in it. And what about you? It could be anyone. There's more than one that has it in for Nicholas. And who knows what the neighbors get up to by night. What's so suspicious about this Thomas? Just that he was drunk and blabbering about how he was going to bring back venison from the woods. Tell me something about Hanakin Hare. He used to be Master Huntsman here a while back. 
But then Nicholas got him accused of a murder, and the hare had to flee. It cost him the huntsman's rank and Margaret, too. What happened between Hare and Nicholas, anyway? Those two didn't get on from the start. And then that business with Margaret really set them at each other's throats. But it all came to a head about 15 years back when Sir Henry of Lyper came to visit. So Hannah's his father? Just so. There was a banquet at the castle in his honor. And in the morning they found one of Sir Henry's men-at-arms in the ditch with his neck broken. Well, Nicholas made sure the blame fell on Hannikin Hare. So how did Nicholas put the blame on Hare? Nicholas always had a viper's tongue, and events made it easy for him. That evening there'd been a right falling out between Hare and the guardsmen. Blows were struck. Well, Sir Divish didn't want any ill will with Sir Henry, so he tried to settle things as quick as he could, and Hare got the short straw. And what happened to Hare? That's just it. No one rightly knows. They put him in the dungeon, but when Sir Henry's men came for him the next morning, he was gone. No one knows what became of him. What was going on with Margaret? Her father promised her to Hannikin, because they seemed a good match. But Nicholas couldn't stomach that, so he did what he did. I want to ask about something else. Tell me something about Hannikin Hare. He used to be Master Huntsman here a while back. But then Nicholas got him accused of a murder, and the Hare had to flee. It cost him the Huntsman's rank, and Margaret, too. I want to ask about something. So why do people think Tom of the Baths is involved? Ah, that's just nonsense. He was bragging in the tavern that he'd put on a venison feast for the village girls. Deer for the deers. Did he? I doubt it. He's all mouth and no trousers. But if you want to know more, ask my husband, the innkeeper. I wasn't here that evening. That'll be all. Thanks. God bless. Look where you're go- Hey, what the- Clear off before I call a catch pool. I'd like to find out about the poachers round here who've been stealing game recently. If you ask me, there's some questions best left unanswered. But go and see Elena if you're determined. That old gossip will tell you all there is to know. May the Lord watch over you, Henry. I heard there are poachers in the woods round here. If only if it was just poachers. It's that sorcerer Hare. He's the one who's been running the market. I said he'd be back, and I said he'd be vengeful. And I was right both times. Tell me something about Hannikin Hare. Ah, that was all years ago. He turned up here one day, no one rightly knew where from. He claimed up at the castle to be a nobleman's son, and so he got the office of Master Huntsman, and Margaret was promised him for his wife. Nobody could have known he was a sorcerer. 
And how did his sorcery reveal itself? Well, he was able to vanish into thin air in the forest right in front of folk. And I've heard it said he spoke to animals, too. Though I don't know the truth of it. That doesn't sound very convincing to me. That's because you've not seen his marksmanship. It was natural, the things he could do with that bow of his. They say he sold his soul for the gift of it. I see. How did it go with Margaret? I'm not one to gossip. But she was a flighty lass in her younger years. She could never make up her mind which one she wanted. The hair or Nicholas. So in the end, fate decided for her. What do you mean? What happened with hair? Oh, that was quite something. And then some on top of it. Sir Henry of Lipo was visiting here at the castle, and Hare snapped his guardsman's neck with his bare hands. Of course, they found him out. But how do you keep a sorcerer under lock and key? You can't. That's your answer. And that Satan spawn slipped the net. Oh, well. It's quite a wild story. Any idea why he murdered the man? No one knows. And most likely never will. But they say he was fully in the devil's power. There was a full moon, you see. Was he actually seen killing the guardsman? I suppose so. Else they'd hardly know who did it, would they? Hmm. That's probably true. There is one other thing I want to ask. Tell me something. Ah, that was all years ago. He turned up here one day. No one rightly knew. He claimed up at the castle to be a nobleman. Well, I should be... Not at all. God bless. I want to ask one more... So ask. Has anyone actually seen this hammock in here? He seems to exist only as a bogeyman to frighten naughty children. Oh, he exists all right. But he flits around in the forest like a shadow. They won't be catching him anytime soon. But Blacksmith Betty heard some of their goings-on in the woods. Goings-on? What's that supposed to mean? Cavorting and raising hell. Sorcery! Hare meets up with his sorcerer's apprentices and they feast in the clearing in the woods. In the morning, they turn into ravens and scatter. Or so she says. But you'll have to ask Betty for more. Who knows what she saw? Or what she was doing there with them. Very well. I'll ask. Who does Hare want revenge on? Master Huntsman Nicholas, of course. When the Hare disappeared, Nicholas took his Margaret and the Huntsman's posting. So Nicholas came out of it well? That one always knew how to land on his feet. Thanks. I think I know all I need. I've got a few questions about these poachers. So ask. What do you make of this poaching that's been going on? It's clear as day. Hannikin hair's back. And putting those antlers on Nicholas's house? Well, we all know what that means, don't we? It's the sign of a cuckold, you mark my words. You mean to say his wife's cheating on him? All I'm saying is she might be feeling the urge. It happens in the best of families. Well, you're the first who's certain of Harry's return. So far, I've just heard vague rumours. Well, now, I wouldn't say I'm completely sure. I suppose some other mischief maker could have done it. But better the devil you know. And everyone hereabouts knows Hare. 
You were singing a different song not long ago. So? Why do you want to know so much, anyway? It's nothing to you, but I'm helping Nicholas unmask that local poaching gun. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, now you know. And you also know not to keep anything from me. So, what's the story with that hair? All right, I'll tell you what I know. But promise not to tell Nicholas I said it. I'll do what I can, but I need to let him know what I discover. So, out with it. It's to do with Margaret, his wife. They say it's all because of her. Keep going. I know full well hair's here, because Margaret admitted as much. What did she tell you? That he waited in the woods till she came by and they exchanged some words. Words was all she told me. Who knows what they actually got up to. And what did they speak about? I don't know. But if Nicholas knew they'd met, he'd most likely kill her. You're sure she wasn't saying it in jest? Oh, no. Margaret wouldn't joke about something like that. Well, you're the first who's certain of Hare's return. So far, I've just heard vague rumours. You were singing a... Oh. Well, now you... All right. I'll do what I... It's to do with... Keep going. I know... F what did she tell... That he waited... And what did they speak... I don't know. You're sure she... Oh, no. Who's this Hannikin Hare, anyway? Hannikin Hare? There was a time he was Master Huntsman here, and Margaret was set to be his wife. But then he got himself accused of murder, and fled before they could hang him. Margaret and his job both ended up going to Nicholas. So what's the story between Hare and Margaret? It was complicated. He wanted her and she wanted him too, I reckon. At least for a while. But then she hitched up with Nicholas and now she says she never had a thought of wedding Hannock and Hare. So what went on between Hare and the Huntsman? Those two? There was no love lost between them from the moment Hare arrived. And then Margaret got involved... It was a messy business. Do you think Hare really killed that man? Who knows the truth of it now? I did find it all a bit odd. Hare never was much of a hothead. But then again, no one really knew him that well. And Margaret never wanted to speak of it. Wouldn't hear a word about it. That's all I need. Thanks. I've got a few... So ask. What do you make of this poaching? It's clear. That's all. Greetings, Henry. How are you, Henry? Good health, dear. I've heard Tom of the Baths was mouthing off in here. So he did. He and Jack Piper were bragging about how they'd make a feast for the village lasses. That there'd be venison roast and enough beer to fill a river. And a few days later, they did come and buy a few kegs of beer from me. Did they have anything else to say? Not really. I told him to shut up, or someone would hear him and there'd be trouble. And what did he say to that? Nothing. He had more booze in him than the castle cellar. He just hiccuped and slid under the table. Piper took him off after that, thank God. Do you suppose he meant it? Hardly. He's nothing but a braggart. All right. I'd best ask him myself. I feel free to ask, but don't believe half what he says. 
And who is this Jake Piper? Oh, he's Tom's best mate. A decent fellow. They call him the Piper because everywhere he goes, he's whistling on that pipe of his. Where can I find him? Well, most likely in the quarry. He lends a hand there to make ends meet. Folk were talking about Hannikin hair. Oh, good lord. People do like to prattle on. Don't you go believing a word they say. It's the back of beyond here, and they'll tell any tale to spice things up a bit. Thank you, innkeeper. I'll be going. My respects to you. I hear there's been trouble with poachers recently. I don't have time to talk to strangers. Good day to you. I'm here to find out about the poachers gang, and I need to ask a few questions. Well, ask away. I don't have all day. I heard you were yelling in the tavern that you were off to hunt some venison. Look here. I don't know who you are, but you should watch your mouth. I will, don't you worry. So what happened then? What? Nothing. It was just the beer talking. I got pissed and started spouting shit. Didn't mean a word of it. Maybe not. That remains to be seen. Blacksmith Betty saw people feasting in the woods, and she says there was a nice smell of venison. What do you know about it? Nothing. I wasn't there. And I don't suppose you'll tell me who was? No, because I wasn't there. That'll do me. I hear there's been trouble with poachers recently. I don't have time to talk. How are you, Henry? My respects to you. I need to ask you something about the poachers. What? Me? Why me, for Christ's sake? 
They say you were mouthing off in the tavern. We'd all had a few ales. You know what it's like. The tales get taller. So you didn't go poaching with Thomas? My god, no. That would never even cross our minds. Thomas is a bit wild, but I have some sense at least. May the Lord watch over you, Henry. God save Henry. I'd like to ask you about Hannikin Hare. I'm sorry. But I really don't want to talk about that. The thing is, every time I spoke to someone about hair, they always ended up talking about you. But I don't. You aren't to blame for anything, is that it? Well, I am willing to believe you, but you do know more than you're telling, and I need to hear it. Very well. You're right. And what would you like to know about hair? How were things between you and Hare back then? There was nothing between us. Hannock and Hare impressed my father with all his talk of noble blood. But I couldn't stand him. And I didn't want to marry him. And then it made no odds after he ran away. So you didn't want him? I only asked because I've heard differently. That's village talk. Of course folk gossip. Mostly they just want to hurt Nicholas. Did Hare really commit the murder? God in heaven, how should I know? Anyway, it doesn't matter now. That remains to be seen. What did you talk about in the woods with Hannah and Hare? I see Betty's mouth's been busy. Don't blame her. I had to work hard to weasel it out of her. Now tell me. Oh, all right. Well, it seems Hannah and Hare's exile has addled his brain. He told me he'd go off with me, that he still loves me and nonsense like that. And what about you? What do you mean? I was so shocked, I couldn't even scream. Is that all he told you? He said if I change my mind, 
I'm to hang a garland of forget-me-nots on the house and wait for him at that place of ours. Where was it you saw him, exactly? I wish I could tell you. The whole thing was like a fever dream. I almost got lost trying to get out of the forest. Even if I remembered, it wouldn't be any use to you. Hanneken Hare moves through the forest like a ghost. He knows every tree root off by heart. I want you to hang that garland on the lodge. But I don't want to go anywhere with him. You don't have to go anywhere. But tell me, where's that secret meeting place of yours? On the way to Ujits. Back then, we used to meet by the great big beech tree. Right next to the wayside shrine. There's a lovely view there, you see. And what time will he be waiting there for you? At dawn. What are you going to do to her? Never you mind. The main thing is it will all get sorted out. And that's all that matters, isn't it? I suppose so. Very well, then. I'll hang the garland for you. That'll be everything. I'm guessing Nicholas won't be joining us. Who the devil are you? I thought you wanted to meet up with Margaret. Fortunately, I'm not that much of a fool anymore. I was hoping I'd tempt Nicholas out of his lair. But let's get to the point. Who are you? And what are you doing here? My name is Henry, and I work for the Master Huntsman. So are you going to arrest me? I am. All I ask is that you listen to me first. Why should I listen to you? Because if you care about justice, you're after the wrong man. Anyone can say that. And that's precisely why the accused should get a proper hearing. Let me guess. You're going to tell me you're innocent? I wouldn't presume. I've been poaching on the Divish estate, and I'll take the punishment I deserve. But the crime I was nearly strung up for, that one I didn't commit. Who are you, anyway? Let me introduce myself. My name is Hanneken Hare of Zalush. The nobleman? Um, I used to be. My house became sadly impoverished, and I became the master huntsman at Talmberg. Gamekeeper turned poacher. Hmm, I see. That's quite a transformation. Nicholas gave me no choice. What happened to your family? My father lost his influential friends and the money with them. After his death, I inherited only his debts. There was nothing for it but to sell off all our possessions, see to my sister's welfare, and manage as best I could. That sounds a rough deal. Believe it or not, I never cared for the life of a nobleman. I spent my youth running free, hunting in the woods. What happened between you and Nicholas? I was falsely accused of murder. Henry of Lipa visited Talmberg, and the morning after the banquet in his honor, one of his men was found dead. And didn't they have any cause to suspect you? That's just it, they did. At the banquet, I got into a fight with the man. I know Sir Hanish of Lyper. Was Sir Henry his father? Indeed. He was on his way to Ratai to take charge of the fiefdom for young Sir Hans Capon. Why did you get into a fight with him? The fall of the house of Zalush was the work of the lords of Lipa, and that fellow took great delight in reminding me of it. And then what? Nicholas began to pull strings... Several people came forward as witnesses to say they saw me with the fellow later that night. Why would he have done that? He wanted rid of me. We were both in love with the same lass, you see, and Margaret is his wife today. But back then there was no question which of the two of us would win her. I was the huntsman of noble blood, and Nicholas was just plain Nick. Her father's preference was clear. 
Do you know who did kill the man? No. He was found in a ditch with his neck broken. He could have tripped and fallen all on his own. And that never occurred to anyone? It did. But some people swore they'd seen us jostling on the drawbridge. Of course, that was Nicholas's work. What did Margaret think of you? She took me for a fool. She only had eyes for Nicholas, but I didn't see it then. In the end, she could have saved me. How? She could have told the truth. After the banquet, I was with her. But when they asked her, she said she hadn't seen me that night. How did you get out of it? What leads you to imagine I did? Your head's still on your shoulders, so you must have escaped somehow. I'm alive. But my name and my family's name has been dragged through the mud. For me, that's worse than the sentence waiting for me. If you say so. But you still managed to get away. Well, it's true I had the good fortune to escape from the dungeon. An interesting story. I can't complain of boredom. The question is, will anyone believe me? And how did it happen? It's a long story. I've got time to listen. All right. But for you to understand, I have to start from the beginning. I was born as Hanak and Hare of Zalush, the eldest son of Sidney of Zalush. My house became sadly impoverished. And I became the master huntsman at Talmberg. Gamekeeper turned poacher. Hmm, I see. That's quite a transformation. Nicholas gave me no choice. What happened between you and Nicholas? I was falsely accused of... And didn't they have a... That's just... And then what? Nicholas began to pull strings. Several people came forward as witnesses to say they saw me with the... Why would he have done that? He wanted... But back... How did you get out of it? What leads you to imagine I did? Your head's still on your sh... I'm alive. Mm. Well... From the Talmberg dungeon? That can't be done, can it? It's not too hard when the lord of the castle himself helps you escape. So Divish set you free? From his own dungeon? He couldn't offend Henry, so he had to lock me up. But he trusted me. We were friends, after all. He led me out of the castle in the night. I was given a good horse, and in a couple of days I was in Silesia. And that was the end of it. At least until now. Nah, words are cheap. You're coming with me. Then I'm afraid you don't give me any choice. Not a good move.
are you I feel quite hungry. God save you, Henry. I got hair. And where is he? I last saw him lying down in the forest. Are you saying you killed him? There was no other way. I'm just glad I got out in one piece. Ah, well, I'd rather have had him alive, but what's to be done? But I can't be sure it was really hair, unless you have some proof. Uh, he had an heirloom, a signet ring. That would prove it. I have it here. It's his, all right. <laughs> Hard to believe the legendary Hanukkah hair is gone to his maker. Anyway, I do know how to show my gratitude. Here's your reward, and stop by any time you need to. You'll always find work here. Thanks. 